Good morning. The investigation into the shooting death of David Bernard Pitarelli began on April 30th at 9.50 p.m. with a 911 call from Ryan Cochran. During the course of this investigation, investigators spoke with witnesses, analyzed the crime scene, completed forensic analysis, obtained video from a traffic light mounted camera, and looked into the backgrounds of the parties involved. The case was thoroughly reviewed with the district attorney and there will be no criminal charges filed in this case. The initial investigation of this incident revealed the following facts. Cochran and his friend, Jessica Troutman, left a baseball game and began traveling back to Concord on Concord Salisbury Road. Troutman was driving Cochran's red pickup truck. While traveling on Concord Salisbury Road, Troutman noticed a car approaching them from behind in a fast manner. She reported that the car was being driven in a very aggressive and erratic manner. The car, driven by Mr. Pitarelli, followed Troutman and Cochran approximately five miles before Troutman turned on her street. The car continued to be driven aggressively and erratically as Troutman drove on Concord Salisbury Road, left on Branchview Drive, right on the Union Street, and then left onto Plot. Troutman reported that while the car was following them in this manner, the car would come close to a vehicle, vehicle's bumper, swerve all over the road, and then come back close to her vehicle's bumper. Troutman reported that on two separate occasions when she was getting ready to turn onto a new street, the car came into the lane directly beside the driver's side, and then went the right, excuse me, and then when the light turned green and she proceeded forward, the car suddenly decelerated and got back in behind them. Troutman indicated that on one of these occasions, the car almost crashed into the truck she was driving. Footage from a traffic camera confirmed that Pitarelli was driving aggressively and almost struck the red truck. According to Troutman and Cochran's statement, when the car turned on the plot drive and they were almost at Troutman's house, they became very concerned and Cochran took his gun out of the center console of the truck. Troutman pulled the truck over just shy of her residence. One stop, Pitarelli got out of his car and advanced towards the truck. Troutman and Cochran both exited their vehicle and stayed near the truck. Troutman remained just outside the driver's side door while Cochran moved to the rear left corner of his vehicle. Cochran and Troutman stated Pitarelli immediately started talking loudly and aggressively and seemed agitated. Troutman noticed Pitarelli had no shirt or shoes on and was wearing only basketball shorts. Pitarelli advanced on Troutman and Cochran, yelling loudly at both of them to shake his hand. Troutman made a slight hand movement to do this. Pitarelli then aggressively advanced towards Cochran, while continuing to yell and demand Cochran shake his hand. Cochran moved the gun from his right hand to his left hand. He indicated he did this so he could shake hands. At this point, Pitarelli apparently noticed the handgun and became enraged, beginning to shout, are you going to shoot me? and kill me, you blank. Cuss word. Cochran retreated back away from Pitarelli towards the front of his truck. Troutman moved between the two men, asking Pitarelli to leave. <coughs> Excuse me. At this point, Pitarelli struck Troutman in the neck, knocking her to the ground. Pitarelli then charged, at, charged and lunged towards Cochran. Pitarelli measured approximately six, four, six feet four inches in height and 276 pounds. Cochran is approximately 5'10 and 188 pounds. As Pitarelli charged at and lunged towards Cochran, Cochran pointed his handgun and fired. Pitarelli continued to charge forward after the initial shots and, Pit excuse me, and Cochran continued to fire. Cochran fired his handgun nine times. The physical evidence at the scene indicates that Cochran was backing away from Pitarelli and retreating when he fired his gun as Pitarelli continued to charge towards him. The preliminary autopsy report indicates Pitarelli was hit with rounds five to seven times. A final analysis of entry and exit wounds could determine the final count. Pitarelli suffered gunshot wounds to the front and left side of his torso. Cochran then made the initial 911 call. Cochran then retrieved a small medical bag from his vehicle and with the assistance of a neighbor, attempted first aid to include CPR. Officers arrived and took control of the scene. Cochran and Troutman voluntarily came to police headquarters and gave several hours of statements 
and voluntarily turned over their cell phones to review. Further investigation revealed Pitarola did not attend the ball game. Indications are he left his home, excuse me, left the home of a friend after having a domestic confrontation with his girlfriend, wherein she reported to another that Pilaretti, Pitarelli had assaulted her. Based on what was reported, this assault on his girlfriend occurred less than one hour before Pitarelli pursued Cochran's vehicle. There are indications Pitarelli consumed a quantity of an impairing substance, possibly cocaine, alcohol, and potentially other substances, prior to his pursuing the Cochran vehicle. There is, an unconfirmed, there is unconfirmed information that Pitarelli's interest in Cochran's vehicle may have been a case of mistaken identity. Cochran reported he had his girlfriend Troutman drive his pickup truck from the baseball game that evening since he had consumed two beers at the ball game. There is no evidence to suggest any impairment on Cochran's behalf. Others at the game were interviewed and confirmed that Cochran was not impaired at any time that evening. Cochran had a carry concealed permit for the weapon that was in his truck that evening. Officers with Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department reported to Concord detectives working this case that they had come in contact with Pedarelli several times and were responding to calls for service at Pedarelli's home. After seeing Pedarelli enraged and dealing with him at these calls for service, the CMPD officers stated they felt Pedarelli was dangerous enough that an alert was placed on the residents and officers district-wide were instructed, or excuse me, were made aware to not respond to this residence alone. Investigators, myself, and District Attorney Roxanne Vanikoven have spoken with the family as this case has unfolded. This morning, a full account of the evidence was provided to the family by investigators, myself, and DA Vanikoven. The police department truly expresses condolences to all those involved in this traffic event tragic incident, excuse me, but in particular to the Pitarelli family. On the press release is also a quote from our district attorney where she talks about self-defense and what 